Hi there everybody, welcome to our vodcast on the negative feedback loop. Now the negative feedback loop is a mechanism that's been designed in our body to make sure that we keep things like hormones and other internal factors constant to maintain homeostasis in our bodies. For example, we don't want to have too much hormone in our blood or we don't want to have too little hormone in our blood. So the negative feedback loop makes sure that we have the right amount of hormone in our blood. Now the negative feedback loop in our bodies works just like the thermostat in your house. Your thermostat is that device on the wall that monitors the room temperature and makes sure that the room temperature stays at the temperature that it's set at. So this way the room doesn't get too cold and the room does not get too hot. So let's take a look at how a thermostat works. So first of all, in our example here, we're going to set the heat for 70 degrees inside the house. That's our homeostatic level. That's where we want the temperature to be, let's say. But, as we know, eventually rooms are going to cool down. So this room is going to fall to 69 degrees. Now, as your thermostat is monitoring the temperature in the room, it's going to read this fall to 69 degrees and say, that's not 70 degrees. So we've got to do something about this. Now, as a result, your thermostat is going to click on, turn on the furnace, and then as a result, you're going to get hot air coming through the ducts or hot water going through your baseboards and heating up the air. Either which way, the room is going to start to heat up because of the heat being dumped into it. So with the addition of all the extra heat that wasn't there before, the temperature is then going to rise to 70 degrees. And your thermostat is going to say, hey, that's perfect, guys. That's all we need. And as a result, it's going to send a message down to the furnace to shut off. And then the heat gets turned off. But as we know, when the heat gets turned off, it's only a matter of time before the room starts to cool again. So it's going to loop around. So as the temperature falls, the thermostat turns on, the temperature rises because the heat being put into the rooms, and when it's warm enough, the heat turns off. And then we loop back around again, and this cycle goes on all day, several times a day, to make sure that the room is at the right temperature because that's the temperature that you like it at. Well, your body is no different from that. Our example for this one is going to be blood glucose level. So here in the background, we have this baby just smashing this cake here, getting frosting all over its nose, its cheeks, its hands. It's probably got some sprinkles up in its nose. It's got cake all over its mouth and inside of its mouth. And it's eating this cake and it's going to town because it's amazing, it's awesome, and it's delicious. Now, as we know, if we eat a big, huge chunk of chocolate frosted cake like this, we're going to put a lot of glucose in our blood. So as a result, the brain in our body is our thermostat. And that thermostat is going to detect that the glucose levels in our blood is too high. Now our homeostasis is out of balance because we have too much glucose. So we have to lower that glucose. And what's going to happen is your brain is going to send a signal down to your pancreas just like in our prior example, the thermostat sends a signal down to the furnace and then your pancreas is going to release insulin. Now we learned that the pancreas with the islets and Langer hands release insulin and insulin is the hormone that opens up the cells to allow sugar to get into the cells. Your cells can use the sugar to make energy. So as the sugar is rushing into your cells, the levels of sugar is now dropping in the blood. It's kind of like having a hallway full of people, and as everyone files into classrooms through doorways, the number of people are going to decrease. Now, as the glucose levels are dropping and getting close to normal, eventually we're going to get to the normal levels of glucose. So the insulin brings blood glucose levels back to normal. And now your brain's going to detect this and say, okay, perfect. We don't need to release any more insulin because the glucose levels are balanced now and we're good. We're so good with this. So what will happen is your brain is going to tell the pancreas to stop releasing insulin. And as a result, the insulin is no longer being released. Because if it is continually being released, then your blood glucose level will get too low. Now your blood glucose level will maintain itself until the next time you eat. And then when you do eat, what will happen is you're going to dump a lot of glucose back into your blood. Your brain's going to realize this and then tell the pancreas to release insulin. And then the insulin is going to bring the glucose levels back down to normal. And then your brain's going to tell the pancreas to stop. And the insulin is stopped. And the insulin is no longer being released. 
and then it loops back over again. So that's one way the feedback loop works in our bodies. Okay, so I hope that was clear, and I hope that was helpful, and thank you so much for your time.